name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Soon afterward he went through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their means. The Word of the Lord. They got their name in Holy Scripture, Joanna, Mary, and Susanna, but they had no idea that would happen. It's not why they did it. It's not why they loved It's not why they supported Jesus and his disciples with the material things they needed as they preached, taught, and performed miracles in the Palestinian countryside. A different Mary, the mother of James, along with Joanna we just heard about, and Salome, the mother of James and John, were some of the faithful women who came to the tomb of Christ with spices to anoint the Lord. Their story also made it into the Holy Spirit's record, but they had no idea about that at the time, nor were they thinking such things, nor would they ever dream that their names would be honored in the church, and in fact would have their own day in the calendar, today, August 3rd, and that scores of newborn girls would be named after them. They didn't know, and they didn't care. That's not why Joanna, of high social standing, supported Jesus perhaps putting her own standing in jeopardy, as she was the wife of an official in Herod's court. It's not why these women got up early on Sunday morning and lugged around the essentials for anointing. They did it because it was the right thing to do. No, more than that, they did it because that's who they were in Christ, faithful servants. In an era when the testimony of females was considered less than a man's, in an age when chauvinism was the norm and not the outlier, it is remarkable that these women were chosen by God himself to be witnesses of the resurrection, that it would be them, not the apostles, who would first come to the empty tomb and testify about what they saw. But that is not why they did it either. That's not how love works. That's not how fruits of faith work either. The Bible and much of church history are remarkably devoid of programs, of self-help talk, and all the rest. Those made holy simply do holy things, and they do them often without even thinking about them. Albert Schweitzer, when he recruited workers for his medical missions, didn't want righteous do-gooders who knew exactly how pious his work was. He wanted people who worked hard because that was who they were. The righteous do-gooders burn out. Their work is for themselves, finally, and their own piety. Good works for the sake of good works, sanctification for the sake of sanctification. Finally, it wasn't about love of neighbor. It was about their own growth and their own virtue, service for the sake of service. As St. Paul stated, without love, good deeds and even miracles are just noise, a resounding gong. You remember the Israelite girl in Naaman's household? She never thought about her story making it into Holy Scripture, or that Naaman would learn a great lesson of faith. Yet she told her master... <laughs> her captor, as she was a spoil of war. She told him about the prophet Elisha and how he perhaps could cure Naaman's skin disease. She just did it. Lovers just love. The faithful are just faithful. That's why we remember Mary, Joanna, and Salome, the bearers of myrrh, and the other Marys and Susanna, and the unnamed Israelite slave girl, and all the rest, not because of what they did, but because of what God did for them. He made them righteous, so that they could stand before the judge with confidence. Not in their own lives, those were as filthy as the rest of ours, but with confidence in Christ's righteousness. He was perfect in their place, and he took away their sins. He made them righteous. And righteous people 
do righteous things. So don't worry about counting your good deeds. Don't worry about making sure you volunteer for this or that. Don't worry if you get recognition or not. Rather, concentrate on the grace Christ has bestowed upon you. And yes, the righteousness will come. It will even sneak up on you sometimes without you noticing. For the righteous are just righteous. It just happens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have given us this beautiful gift of grace and that you have lifted us to a startling degree to do good works in your economy of love. We remember all the women of Scripture and the men too who were a part of your economy of love. We thank you so much for them and we thank you again for the opportunity to be a part of your kingdom work. In your name we pray. Amen.